A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. I don't believe the papers. I don't believe the news. Cause all that they serve you are opinionated views. I don't switch on my TV. Cause all they do is lie And I don't need no programming telling me what to buy But I believe, but I believe I believe the truth will set you free I believe the truth will set you free I don't believe in aliens I don't believe in God I don't believe in war What are the reasons why they're far? Don't believe celebrities Pretending to be what they ain't Make poverty history they say Both in the same But I believe But I believe I believe the truth will set you The system will give you what you deserve. It's all around bad, bad judges and Lucifer they serve. Don't believe banks are honest, they fleece you to the bone. And when there's nothing left to get, they'll even take you home. But I believe, I believe, I believe the truth will set you free. Truth will set you free. Well, I believe the truth will set you free. Well, I believe the truth will set you free. Well, I believe the truth will set you free. I believe the truth will set you free. Right, so if I can ask you both, uh, do you think your thoughts are your own thoughts? Good question. Well, um, oh. I think they they kind of are, but they are pushed in one direction from a lot of different factors. Probably at the moment, it's about all about the internet as well. So Facebook and whatever, Instagram, whatever you have, it's going to push you in one direction. It's, it's a bit weird because. I'm, Sometimes I can see some stuff I was talking about to a friend, and then there's like ads about it in the internet, which is really weird sometimes. So mm-hmm. I think I think you are really pushed into some direction sometimes, uh, influenced by all the factors around. And uh, I don't know if there's anyone actually directing it, but yeah. Do, do you think there's such thing as original thought? Yeah, well, everything came from something. So, probably yes, but I think there's so many influencing factors at the moment that it's really changed over time. And I think it was more original like 50, 100 years ago. Um, but uh, everything moves so much faster and more, much more information from, yeah. from everywhere, every corner. And, and yourself? Uh, yeah, I do think that there are some things called, or like original thoughts. Uh, pretty sure because otherwise mankind wouldn't have been able to to evolve like it did so yeah I think there are okay. I, I mean it, it also like it depends on uh, of course like which topics because topics are rather unfamiliar f- unfamiliar with um, of course it's difficult to develop your own thoughts regarding that but yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you think uh, we're being told the truth about the world we live in from from academics, uh, from the media, 
from the government. Do you think everything we've been told about it, the world we live in is true? Uh, yeah. Everything, 100% you'd say? Not 100%, but uh, I mean, it always depends, of course, of the uh, which which newspaper report, uh, reports what, you know, like, because every, every newspaper kind of has its own bias towards political agendas and stuff. But in the end, I don't think that, like, I think there are reliable sources. Could you quote me some? Pardon? Could you quote me some reliable sources for factual information? Well, f well, I don't know for the UK, but I could tell you some for Germany. I don't know if this helps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I usually more uh, my friend, my friend Gavin ah, lives okay. in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a German connection. And my other friend Dell, there, his his uh, father and mother was German. My Oma was Austrian. My Opa was German. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. Ich bin Hauptschotte, Hauptdeutsch. Meine Mutter kommt aus Schleswig-Holstein. Okay, sehr gut. And I've lived, I've lived in Germany, and so is Gavin. So. Yeah, nice, uh, nice, yeah. So, like for, 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 for Germany, I, for, for example, Die Zeit is kind of good, is what it's I like think kind of good. Basically, yeah, like New York Times. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, it depends sometimes. Like I said, it always depends. From, for example, Süddeutsche Zeitung is more like to a more left, not, not totally yeah. left, but like um, more labor kind of thing. Uh -huh. So there are definitely some political biases going on. I suppose, I suppose I was asking because in a the world there's obviously spin, <coughs> lies, deceit, propaganda, yeah. uh, media bias, as you say, political bias. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a direct question then about the world in which you live in? Of course. Now, what shape do you think the world is? What shape do you think Earth is? It's a globe. A globe? Yeah. And yourself? The same. That's, that was everyone was telling us. <laughs> Maybe it's not a perfect... Opa. Uh, wh why, do it is. why do you think it's not a perfect globe? I don't know, because no one, like, it's, it's really hard to measure, in my opinion. So, yeah. like, it really depends on how you look at it as well, because obviously we get mountains and uh, we get the sea, so it's, it's not going to be perfect anyway. Yeah. But, um, well, it, as you see it, or it, as we can see pictures from the space or whatever, yeah. it, it does really look like a globe. So, so if I showed you pictures of uh, Loch Ness monster, would you believe they were <laughs> real? Um, well, there might be something in there. No one knows. No one's found <laughs> anything else. But um, well, let's say I showed you uh, uh, a picture of Superman flying through New York. And there probably are a lot of pictures. Would that, would that, would that it be is. Real? It is easy. It is easy to fake them. It's true. But yeah. Um, so, so, so there, there are many different sources. Uh, many, many different people haven't told uh, the Earth is globe. So uh, it's not only if we if we look at it, something really um, like a conflict at the moment, which is always Russia and U.S. or whatever. And you would you would think that if it wasn't like either, either Russia or the, I don't know U.S. or the West or whatever would see something contrary. But as everyone is like on the same like thought on this one, uh, I think it's actually kind of true. That's why you think it's true then? Yeah. You, you don't think uh, there's a bit of propaganda in that, saying that they're like enemies, that there's a lot of conflict, even though they've signed treaties and they do trade deals together and they share a space station together? It's true they do, but there, was, there were conflicts over time and um, there are a lot of different sources as well, not only like from some direction, but there's actually no one actually saying that Earth is not a globe anyway. So. Have you heard that? Have you heard that people are saying it's not a globe? No. What, what? Sorry. I'll say it's not a globe. Um, but the reason I would say it's not a globe is because I base things in natural science. Do you, do you know what natural science is? You know, in science you have the, the categories of formal, social, and natural science. So, a formal science, you have things like mathematics, because mathematics as a language can be manipulated. Would, would you agree with that? So, like, in English being a language, I can say the grass is green, mm. or I can say the grass is blue. Using English, I'm telling one truth and the other one's a lie, and mathematics can be used as the same as Gavel testify to, you know, you can start from a false axiom, and you can create a mathematical con construct, um, but your axiom that you've created that from has to match observable reality in order for it to fall into the, the realms of natural science. 
So natural science for me is measurable, testable, observable, repeatable. Would, would you agree that that's the core and the hub of science? Has to be yeah. measurable, testable, observable, yeah, yeah, repeatable. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I base my outlook and life on. If I remove images from the equation. So if I say to you, you know, would you take an image over natural physics? The, the chances are you would say, no, I, would, I want the natural science. I want to see the physics and stuff. Because you, if the image doesn't match observable reality, then for me, there's a, there's a real issue with it. So the very first thing that I would go to but if I say to you, do you understand fluid dynamics and fluid mechanics? Do you know what that means? It's basically how liquids behave. Okay. So if I gave you a description and I said, water will take the shape of any container. Yeah. Um, the surface will always be parallel and flat. Um, a body of water will never display any shape upon its surface. Mm -hmm. Water is not capable of supporting itself. You know, it'll just keep laying yeah, flat and yeah. pushing outwards, laying flat, pushing outwards, and it'll just keep rising. So we know that, and we know that the Earth is 80% covered in water. Mm -hmm. We know the physics of water and how it behaves upon Earth. So my question would then be, how could we be level on a spinning ball if the place is covered in water? Gravity, but... See, you would say, you, this is they always get you, and... and for me, and I'm not being disrespectful now, when I go to religious people and I say, yeah. and I ask them questions and they can't answer me, they'll say, God, it's God's way, it's God's will. Yeah, yeah. And that's been termed as God of the gaps argument. Yeah. You know? So I get the same from people when I ask them these questions, they say, gravity. And I say, well, that's the gravity of the gaps. Because you're just throwing a word out there and then, you know, so what I would ask you for is a practical example. Could you define gravity and then provide a practical example? Or could you provide a practical example of a body of water conforming to the exterior of a shape? Do you think you could provide that? <laughs> well, gravity could be just, yeah, just a couple of points of that. Yeah. I, I, I could say to you, well, the air, the medium that we are in, and your jacket is more dense than the air, so it falls. So, so see, if I got a helium balloon, and I filled the helium balloon with helium, and I let it go and it rises, what would you explain the physics? What would, what would, what's going on there? Would you call a helium balloon an anti-gravity device? It's lighter than, it's sure it's lighter than air in this moment. But well, there you go. Just like your jacket's heavier than the air and it fell. <laughs> yeah. So what we look for is when people say gravity, I need substance to that. Uh -huh. you know, what is this gravity? Can I define it? Can I actually measure it? Does it have substance to it? And we don't, it's just theoretical. And the only way that they use gravity is because you have to have some invisible force to explain why we're stuck to a ball upside down and why oceans are curved and sticking to this, to the outside of this sphere. But, you know, if somebody makes a claim to me like that, I go back to real physics and I say, well, how does liquid behave? Mm -hmm. Liquid shows me that it's unable to support itself like that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the scale, it'll just fall flat and keep pushing outwards. If I go to a pond or a, a bath or a basin, a bucket, the water behaves like that, I go to a swimming pool, the water behaves like that, I go to a lake, the water behaves like that, then we get to the ocean, and people think that the ocean and the physics is different at the ocean, it's no different, the water is here on earth, in the same atmospheric pressure as everywhere else, it's not absolutely impossible to have the body of water convex like that, or to say me and you are standing here, and the ocean is sloping away from us, but the water doesn't flow, these things go totally against all observed, tested reality. So there's a, there's a real contradiction, and the, the contradiction for me is people are confused because they've been shown these images, and then people are trying to come up with the explanations to match the images. But really, for me, if you remove the images, you go to real basic physics, basic physics tells us that what they're showing us is not real. Do you know what the horizon is? What shape's the horizon? It doesn't really have a shape. Well, how would you? Yeah, like, what do you mean by saying? Like, like, what we always see as a horizon is just just light particles, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, whatever we see, it's 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 not blue; it's black anyway. But what we see is light particles, like being flashed in the yeah, in the ozone and everything. But you're else. standing at the ocean, and you're looking out to the ocean. You know, we call the horizon the flat parallel mm -hmm. line that we see that things disappear into. Mm -hmm. Now when we go on an aeroplane, we rise up, that line rises up with us to yeah. the eye level. Yeah. Now if you're on a ball, 
basic physics, as soon as you rise up from the ball, the horizon, 360 degrees round about you would start to fall, regardless of how big the ball is. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how high we go, the horizon is flat and at eye level. No measurable curvature anywhere. Have you ever seen the curvature of the Earth with your own eyes? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so when I say to you about the natural physics of water, uh -huh. you know, what do you think of that? I mean, is it causing a conflict in your mind or? Kinda. Well, it is kind of weird, but like, what what would be the purpose of hiding information like that? No control, basically. So but why? Who? But who? Well, who this and is why? the thing. I've, all these things is an ongoing investigation. We already know that the governments lie on every aspect of our life. You know, they push propaganda out there, you know, they've never had a history of telling us the truth. You know, we could go right now and pick out, you know, lies that can be proven, you know. So then I would say to people, would you extend your trust then to ignore, you know, if I told you a lie once, your trust for me is going to be diminished, you know. Um, so when people say that, I say, well, it's an ongoing investigation for us to get at the bottom of why. Um, right now, I'm only concerned with bringing awareness to people that we are actually being lied to. Um, would it concern you, you know, if I say to you that there is no actual photographs or video from space? <laughs> That'd be weird. But what about, I mean, what about all those actions? Like, I think a week ago, I think it was a week ago, I seen just some random video from some random or YouTube YouTube channel putting a GoPro on a helium <laughs> balloon yeah. to this guy. Or, and to, but why would they do that? Like, why would they fake footage of something that random in the end? Well, see, a GoPro camera. A yeah. GoPro camera has what's called a fisheye lens. Yeah. So it makes the horizon, the flat parallel line, curved. So even if we're on the ground looking at the horizon, it'll curve the horizon. And as we go up, it'll keep curving it. So, so if, you, if you say that, uh, we, if we shoot up a normal camera, just like that one, and a GoPro, we would get two through different. different. Yeah. Have you done it? Yes. Well, I've not done it personally, but there's many people have done it. But how, how do you know it's 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 not fake? <laughs> well, this is the thing. I, you know, things have to be repeated. But I know for a fact that the GoPro has a fisheye lens. So yeah, if it's we true, take, it's true, if yeah. we take a, a, a wide angle camera and a it's gonna be, GoPro, it's gonna look different. Aye. Yeah, it curves everything to bring everything in to the to the frame. But the wide angle lens keeps everything as it is. So there's high altitude balloons of wide angle cameras and there's high altitude balloons of GoPro cameras. But the thing with a GoPro, when the, when the weather balloon bursts, as it bounces, the horizon goes from concave to convex to concave to convex. Do you understand? Um, so it's basically about the Earth being flat. But where, 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 where's, like, where, where's the end of the Earth? Then? See, this is, this is where the fallacies come in, because they have put these cartoon images out into the, the public. When you say flat Earth to people, they say, where's the edge? Yeah. You go, well, where do you get the idea of an edge from? Why must there be an edge? Because it says flat. So, so that denotes then that there has to be an edge. So what, what about if you if you go, let's say, fly to Australia and yeah. just keep on going? Yeah. How come you land back in Europe? Or well, do you think you're talking about circumnavigation? Well, <laughs> if, if we say if we say there's the North Pole, okay? Hi. Here's Australia. Here's, you know, whatever you like. So we're here in Australia, there's the North Pole. We go. And your compass would always point north. Your point, your compass always points north. You get yeah. around in a circle and it's the same, same mathematics. You hold, you hold a compass flat. Mm. Yeah, a map is flat. Okay, and uh, what's, what's, what's the... You can put up in Star Wars and Star Trek, isn't it? Have a different idea of what might be the real case. Well, if you if you, if you think about it, if you the the Australia one again, if you if you go north all the time, and as soon as you think it would turn around, turn around as well. Like as soon as you like somewhere it has to be a edge. Or, or where would you land if you go one direction and not not care about compasses or whatever? Well, we have so many areas on there that are restricted that normal human beings can't just go and access. So there's a thing called the Antarctic Treaty, where I think is it 47? 57 nations. 57 nations. Work in unison, they signed a treaty so that no humans can just freely go to Antarctica to explore and to travel. The perimeter, it's a perimeter that they, they patrol. Some people 
reckon that Antarctica actually goes all the way around the outside of us. And this is this is what some people believe, and that's what they're patrolling. Like a ring magnet. You know a ring magnet in your loudspeakers? So you've got yeah. the North Pole in the middle of the magnet, and the South Pole's the ring round it. So, like, like that. That's one model, put it that way. But not something we necessarily subscribe to. It's so, ongoing. If, if, I, if I asked you, you know, and I says to you, do you believe that the Earth is a globe? And you both said yes. I would say, could you give me your number one proof for why you believe that? <laughs> uh, proof, yeah, that's difficult. It's just, I don't know, it's like... Would it be safe to say that the images and the videos that you see are, are what sway your thoughts on the shape of the earth? Rather than your direct experience? Or is it this is what we think, guy. But yeah. like, obviously, it's really, really easy to to fake images and videos, or whatever. But I, I wouldn't like the biggest is thing it the saying it is is just the just reason why would anyone do it? Why would anyone fake like take care to fake all that information? Because like some people could just get a rock like SpaceX work, for example, whatever could just try it out, and then. Would they get shut down, or what would happen to them? Like, well, or, what would what would all those like people preventing us from thinking it's not yeah, a globe like, do to prevent it? Yeah. Uh, would they prevent you from doing anything, or what well, do you this think? Is the thing, you know, rockets and stuff are a, quite a restriction. You can't just buy, you know, military grade equipment to start ah, firing no, rockets no. and stuff. So they have that kind of thing sewn up. Um, but what I would say, you know, in regards to rockets, if you actually watch any of the, the rocket launches that they do, the rocket starts like this, and it goes up, and it starts to lean over. And it leans over until it's parallel with the Earth, and it disappears out of our view. Now, as soon as it disappears out of our view, they cut to cartoons, a CGI computer screen, and they show you a rendition of what they're saying is actually happening. They're not showing you what is actually happening. They're showing you a a computer generated video or image you know? but the thing I would say to you is, is again going back to physics and tested reality every single day of our life they tell me that there's a vacuum up there and that the earth is a pressurised system with layers of gas that slowly but surely get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner before they, you know, you, you meet this vacuum of space but in physics we know that any pressurised system must have a sealed container if we have an opposing pressure system outside of the sealed container and I remove the container's you know, walls, the pressure in there equilibrates with the other pressure systems, you understand? So they're telling us that these two things, two opposite pressure systems exist without a solid barrier between them, which is impossible. We cannot recreate that. We Surely can't. the vacuum would suck everything from the earth yeah. into space. But then again, they come back to their magical God of the Gaps argument. Gravity. Gravity is pulling everything to the centre of the Earth and blah, blah, blah. But again, we have no practical example. No. What, about, what about rims around other planets? That's, that's some gravitational force as well, isn't it? Well, or is it faked as well? That's the no, other no, thing. no. The thing is, is the luminaries. The luminaries that everybody can view the luminaries. Mm. Now there's people with super zoom cameras and telescopes who are showing us what these things actually look like yeah. and they don't look anything like the way NASA portrays them to be. Um, we can't actually get to them, we don't know what the substance of them is, what they're composed of, where they actually are. Um, but the fact is, is that they never change in, in relation to each other. You know, when you look up at the six stars at night, they're in the same formations. You understand? So if, if this is the sun and this is the heliocentric model, if this is the sun and we are spinning while we go around the sun, while the sun's travelling, so night time here at summer, you're looking out into this side of the sky, six months time you're on the other side of the sun, looking into another night sky, and you always see Polaris and you always see the same star formation. There's a lot of contradictions to, to the natural facts, the physics, you know. The difference is, is people don't understand that maths is a language. Natural science requires testing, measuring, observing, repeating, scaling things. So, you know, if something's real in reality, I could scale it and show you it. Do you think you could show me a scale model of the globe using rock, dirt, sand, water, 
Do you think you could create a scale model? No? No. Do you think it's real? <laughs> but then they'll say, but the Earth's gravitational uh, force gets in the way. We need another planet to show you. Again, we're getting into the realms of religion where I get excuses. You know? There's been exactly 520 people in space that can apparently look down and see a big ball. Have you met up with anyone? Is it 520? No, no. I can't say I have, but that's just the, the official number of astronauts that have been up there apparently. Yeah. But, there, apparently but, there, but there have been questions the validity of going to the, the moon on a Bible to swear on the Bible, and they all refused to swear on the Bible. Think people we're not religious people at all. I'm, I'm totally science based my, my whole outlook in life. I'm a, like Gav, a direct realist. You know, I have to be able to touch, smell, taste, measure. You know, and if I can't do that, I don't believe what anybody's telling me. You know, um, but this is this is how religious cults work for me. Yeah. You know, um, and that's basically what I see the, the whole heliocentric model is. It was created by priests. You know, it came from a time when the religions and the churches ruled the, the show, you know, and people think that they just gave that up. They never gave it up, you know. For me, they infiltrated real science. Because going back to what you were saying, why would they lie about this? Well, it's simple. Right now, if we were in here and we seen this fence around us, as human beings, we would see the fence and see the barrier and say, I'm going to climb that and I want to go and see what else is there. Therefore, I'm going to keep expanding and keep going. If I, if I believe I live on a ball, and a vacuum flying in space, mm. where is it to go? Nowhere. So in your mind you're saying everything's been found and discovered. So you're not going to go and try and find anything, you're just going to sit still. Except for me it's part of the mind control, it's to stop people from breaking free and exploring mm -hmm. to find out actually where we really are. Mm -hmm. you know? so. like, what could be a possible answer to this question? Like, where are we? Yeah. Well, this is it. People like myself understand it. I think there's more across the way. Um, we're either sealed in some sort of unit with access and exit points, or it could be an infinite type plane where we're in one pond and across the ice there's other ponds and other life. You know, and this is what they may have been hiding from us. Who knows? Okay. Who knows? But again, it, it, you know, rather than thinking, oh, there's life out there in outer space which is unattainable. It was much more um, exciting to me, and you know, there's possibilities if we can get across the way. There might be other things lateral. Yeah. Mm. Well, they have us looking up there. We should be looking here. Mm. Yeah. But again, you know, it just comes back to me for physics and you know what I can observe. Like right now, the liquid in that cup, the liquid in the bottle, any body of water, we know that the, it doesn't support itself. It falls and it pushes outwards. And you can scale it up to whatever size you like, the physics are never going to change. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, there's Gav, he's... you want to tell him about yeah. your background? What, what are you guys studying? Finance. Finance? Yeah. Both of you, eh? Masters, right? So a bit of maths is in there anyway, eh? You know. <laughs> That's what I studied here in 1986. I did a combined honours degree in mathematics and physics. I'm 52 now, and about three years ago I woke up to the same questions that Dell and, and John here has, huh? uh, that, you know, it just doesn't add up, you know, the natural physics just does not, it contradicts what they're telling you, yeah, and when you start to look at your own belief systems, what it is you actually believe and what proof you have of that belief, then it all falls to pieces, you know, when I, mean, I was quite shocked, you know, to be quite honest, being a mathematician, but when you look at it, it's, you know, it's a formal science, it's built on assumptions and axioms, we get told a lot of imagery, we get a lot of Hollywood when we're young and to fortify the, the belief system and you know, you can do your whole life right, thinking that you're living in a spinning ball. But if you actually look at your common sense, you know, you're okay with yourself spinning. I mean, Apart from when you're having a good night out, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <was just> <laughs> I know you were yesterday morning, for example. <laughs> But, um, you know, and it goes against your, your own common sense and, and contradicts the, the natural physics of, uh, of water and everything. All right, so all I can say is uh, have a good think about it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a game changer for your head and for, you know, what it is you then maybe want to do with your life, you know, and think about things, you know.
So, what's the suggestion? Like, what? Well, who is supposed to change anything, or what is supposed to be tested, and how? How do you want to prove your point? I think everybody, what, what I get back to is there's such a thing called Scottish common sense realism. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's 17th century, 18th century philosophy. It's the people who grounded this university. Thomas Reed, David Hume, John Locke, people like that who were involved in the in natural philosophy is what they used to call it, which was a much more holistic view of things, right? Everything's very much compartmentalized nowadays. You know, you get a solar physics, astrophysics, stellar physics, cosmologies. You know, nobody looks at the big picture. And um, the, main, the main idea behind it is that everybody needs to be a scientist. And what you need to believe is your common sense and your own testable, observable, repeatable, measurable experiments, yeah? And not an authority, and certainly not a Hollywood film, yeah? Because that's the difference, and that's where we feel people need to wake up to, you know, to be to be scientists themselves, not to just take things for granted, yeah. what people tell you, but mm. to actually do your own tests, your own thought, that's, that's your own, you know, what, what, what John was saying at the beginning, you know, your thoughts, your own, you know? Um, because it's very easy not <laughs> to realise that they're not, you know? The only contradiction again is the images that, you know, all observations in science will tell you that it's a level plane you're upon. But it's the images that cause a contradiction. What I would suggest is there's so many um, anomalies now with footage from NASA and these space institutions. Things like bubbles coming from the helmet, um, transparency through their body because they're using green screens, they're using harnesses and wires to suspend them. And now they're employing things like virtual reality technology. So I'm sure you'll have seen like a PlayStation and you get the wee camera thing where it picks up the room and then you can be sitting in the room and you can see yourself on the TV and at the same time you can see objects that you can kick and move and it'll move on the screen. So these guys are looking at a screen and they're looking as if they're on the ISS and they're holding things but it's really not there. They're watching it on a screen to make sure they're holding it in the right place and stuff. There's so much footage now of these anomalies that, you know, it's getting beyond a joke. It's like they're almost trying to tell us that they've been doing this, you know? If you, if you go to space now, what do you see? What do you, what do you think? I don't think you can get beyond the sky. I think there's something solid up there. Because as I say, if there's another medium, whether it's some, some religious people say there's water up there, some space institutions will say it's a vacuum, but we know, again, going back to science, well, if you have two different mediums, you have to have a solid separation, or else they will equilibrate with each other. Whether it's water and air, or, you know, a vacuum and gas, or whatever it will be, they will separate themselves, or they'll equilibrate with each other. And this solid separation, was it created by someone, or is it just there? Well, I've, I've never been religious. You know, my, my, my intelligence, my... my um, my, my honesty says to me, look, I can't observe something from nothing. I can't observe random chance life appearing from nothing. You know, I can't observe and measure and test these things. So it leads me to the point of, well, maybe there's intelligence behind this. What intelligence that is, some will jump and say God or a religious God. I, I don't do that. For me, it's an ongoing investigation. You know, it's a realisation of the reality we're actually in. You know, and for me, I always push that. <clears throat> I know it's not a globe. I know that it's a level plane of some sort. I don't know what the full dimensions are, but we have to have full exploration. Sorry, we have to have the population of the world awake to this, so that we can then force the armies, the militaries, to start disclosing what the real dimensions of where we are actually are. Um, so I would advise that you check out, if you go to YouTube and type NASA Fakery, you'll you get endless tons, amounts, tons of stuff, endless yeah. amounts, and you can make your own judgment yourself. And then you can start asking the, the critical questions of the vacuum. You can then ask yourself questions of metals, plastics, you know, cabling. And then look at this ISS, this tin can thing. Mm -hmm. Look at the temperatures they're telling you that it's exposed to. So one minute, it's what's the degrees? It's well, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal temperature of heat. And then ra into rapid coldness, back into extreme heat, and cold, extreme heat. Now if we test that here on Earth, Components, wires, they would just fall apart, they would disintegrate very, very quickly. Okay. But they want to tell us that this thing's been up here for the 16, 17 years. Every mission they ever do, nothing goes wrong. It's always fine. 
you know. But now when you've got that critical thought and you go and look at the footage, when you see the rocket go up, lean over and disappear, they will cut to a cartoon and your mind now will pick it up and see that it's a cartoon. It's not actually real. Mm -hmm. Get back to flight and air travel, we fly on aeroplanes called aeroplanes because they fly parallel with the surface. You go up on an aeroplane, it gets to its altitude as quick as it can, it levels off and it stays level until it gets to its destination and it starts to descend, but it descends like this. It doesn't account for the curvature of the earth with its nose dipped down to fly around the curvature of the earth. And again, when you're on the aeroplane and you look out the window, the horizon's at eye level and flat. You should be looking down at it. As soon as you start to rise above a ball, the horizon starts to fall away from you. So that's not what we see. But there's never been any measurable curvature anywhere. No. Look at canals, as I say, look how water behaves, how rivers work. Rivers go from a high point to a low point. You know? But if you look at something like the Nile River, we're, we're expected to believe that it's flown up over the curvature of the earth and it's just totally ludicrous. Nonsense. And it's alright to say you don't know. I think one of the problems is science always doesn't want to say we don't know. We've got a theory for something, we've got a model, but we're more of the opinion. You can look at the natural facts, you can say that is correct, and anything else, it's okay to say you don't know. Yeah. Let's try and find out, you know. So that's the that's core of science. That's science has to be able to say I don't know, mm -hmm. or else it becomes dogmatic and religious. Mm -hmm. Because if it just makes claims to, to know things without any practical example, that's when we're entering into the realms of religion. And that's where I see science in the modern era. It's been infiltrated by religious propaganda mm -hmm. and religious control. You know? I've woken up to the same same realisation. Take me a while. Yeah. Okay, but just another question. Like, if uh, if it's possible to fake all this stuff, I mean, this must like, must like cost a shitload of money, right? Oh really? So. Well, if you get $50 million per day, which is NASA's budget, yeah. $19 billion per year, that's $50 million per day. So what do you have to expend? What's your expenditure on that? You put a firework up in the air, yeah. and then you cut to a movie. Well, how Hollywood can make movies for a budget of a hundred million. Okay, okay but, but just they have like, they, they have like, an, in, theoretically they have an immense budget, right? Yeah. So. Uh, why is it then, if they really want to hide this, why is it possible then that all this information is on YouTube? If there are blogs, YouTube is owned by Google, and uh, so that's just a, th that's just a thing for me. Why, why, why do, don't they hide? It? I, I know some people, some videos get flagged, some information is yeah. taken down, but there are also videos that are up there for like years well, that I cover the same I think topics. That they know that they can't hide it anymore, yeah. so they're slowly releasing it. Oh, okay. You know, so we're getting these videos now where, you know, there's one recently where the two guys are bouncing on the ISS and in the background one of the guys flies past, but they've no masked out the belt or the harness that's coming from him. Mm -hmm. So you can see it as he flies past. Um, and in and, and the very same video, as I said to you about the virtual reality technology, this guy thinks that the object's there and he, he grabs it. He puts it in this hand and he puts it in a bucket. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. So, for me, it's like they can't hide it anymore because technology's starting to advance cameras, aeroplanes, high altitude balloons, stuff like that. So, it's like they're trying to control the release. And the worry for people like me is, is that they're going to then try and sell us another lie. Ah, okay. Okay, so. Okay, so you're also critically towards the alternative information that is, Absolutely. for example, online. Oh, okay, Absolutely. okay, that is cool. You have to be critical yourself, people yeah. need to think for themselves and they don't do that anymore. Yeah. We're know? trying to bring back to the individual, so that the individual's thinking critically and has the ability to analyse information, mm -hmm. to look for the logical fallacies and, you know, do things actually add up to measurable, testable, observable, repeatable, um, and inform people that that's what the core of science is. And if it doesn't fall into that criteria, it has to be ignored. Mm -hmm. you know? How many, how many people do you think have the same thoughts about that? Like, could, could, could all of the scientists have the same thoughts, at least the same basic thoughts about that, just try to make up a corporation or whatever to actually find out? Or would you think 
it will work because government or whatever will restrict it so massively and well, the, lock, got, lock you guys up you or whatever. You get the human aspect, right? So as, as I just said to you about NASA having 19 billion dollars a year, that's a huge amount of money to protect. So you think about that in every other walk of life and people who are in these jobs and the only thing that's in their mind is maintaining what they have, keeping their money, keeping their property, keeping their career going. So a lot of people don't speak out, but now there's more and more people starting to come out. You know, it's, it's really, it's worldwide now. You know, I've been involved for a few years now. Um, and my channel alone has got six and a half thousand subscribers, which has built up over the last year and a half. But there's so many other people out there who have got, you know, an audience. And guys like Gav, who have, you know, a degree, maths and physics, um, that realise it, that are now starting to wake up and come out. So it's just a matter of time, I think, before we have enough people and then we can start pushing for, you know, a discussion and have the scientific community actually looking at this properly. You know? I think it's very important to you that, you know, we don't think there's a big conspiracy of scientists, you know, these no. people are actually just, just like as me and you. washed as me and you were, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I understand also how, you know, the mass is manipulated, so I can understand why people, you know, will still love the globe, right? Mm -hmm and how navigation and astronomy still works mathematically but it doesn't mean that it's a it's a ball that we live on yeah it can just as easily be a, a flat plane or a level plane or you know some kind of plane where we still don't know exactly how much so there's not a conspiracy it's more about the people actually just waking up and realizing that they've been conned huh? yeah um, you know. it's like you know no every, not every single person has to be in on it no, no. because it's compartmentalized and just like me and you, we just assumed and took it for granted. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at it and I went, why do I believe that? I go back to my childhood and it was through school. You know, you go into school and they show you this plastic toy and they just tell you that's the fact, that's the fact. So it's so deeply rooted in you that as you get older, you never question it. You just yeah. take it for granted. Although reality's showing you something totally different. In your mind, you're just thinking, I'm on a globe, I'm on a ball. Mm -hmm. But you're not really paying attention to that. That's how religious. Hypnotism works. You don't, no. You're not attending to the natural facts around you, you know. You're not spinning, you can't feel yourself spinning. Your eye works, you know, absolutely fine. You know, they, they tend to make us feel that our senses are all fallacious, you know, that there's something wrong with them, that we shouldn't trust them, you know. But, you know, to be quite honest, you wouldn't be able to get dressed if you didn't trust your senses, right? You wouldn't be able to cross the road without getting killed if you didn't trust your senses. But all of a sudden, you're supposed to suspend that Again. For a cartoon? Yeah. yeah? Come morning, on. Huh? Every morning you get up out of your bed, you have a cup of water, a cup of tea, you know how the liquid behaves, you wash your face in the sink, you go for a bath, you go to a swimming pool, always you go there. to a lake, the water's always level, always level. If it's not flowing, you know that the body of water's level at every point. Well, on the other hand, we've never really tested anything like those reactions on that amount of water, have we? Like, the amount of water we, we have some kilometer deep section, or we think, or it may tell us, that there are kilometer deep sections of water. Maybe there's just some, due to whatever force is created by that mass of water, and by streams or whatever. I guess that could be like some kind of explanation. Obviously, it doesn't really make sense with, with the stuff you say, like, doesn't expand, whatever. Um, but we can't really, think about it. no one has really ever traded with trillions and trillions of liters of water so um, they haven't either then right no 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 one no, 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 it's, it's, it's again <laughs> it's, it's, it's a questioning the questioning you but know again, 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 absolutely, again, back absolutely. To physics and how we understand fluid mechanics and fluid dynamics mm -hmm. you know a liquid is unable to support itself mm -hmm. you know if the, if the liquids like that then what we're trying to say is that it's going like this and supporting itself now, it doesn't matter if you keep increasing the size, the physics of the liquid will never change. It will just keep collapsing in on itself. You would have to put, like, a jelly substance in and make the water more is it vis viscous, more, have more viscosity, so that it's like, almost like a jelly. And then you could have... So you could walk over it then? Well... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. But again, it's amazing how... You know, that's what I'm saying. When people see these images and you point out like liquid, they still try and rationalise and come up with a, you know, a reason for why the water would behave like that. Oh, it's because it's big. You go, no, that's liquid. It doesn't do that, can it? It's impossible. I mean, why, why 
one of the things that scientists can't tell you is exactly what point, it, you know, how wide does it need to be before water can start to curve? You know, if you ask them that question, I mean, it works for the Earth, which is 4,000 miles radius, but when, does it work at 3,800? Does it work at 3,000 miles? Does it, you know, so you can't scale it. You know, you need another planet, apparently, to, to be able to do the experiment. So very, very easy for them to tell us stuff like that, right? So um, just because there might be um, ein paar Deutsche, die aufzugucken, was meint ihr, habt ihr eure Meinung ein bisschen stimuliert bekommen oder werdet ihr darüber nachdenken? Sag was in Deutsch für die, für die internationale Zuschauer. Ja, also es gibt definitiv ein paar Dinge, die sich äh, schlecht erklären lassen, wo man definitiv auch kritisch gegenüberstehen muss. Ich muss jetzt für mich sagen, ich habe jetzt nicht die, die Expertise da drin, dass ich mir da jetzt wirklich ein Urteil bilden kann, weil mir natürlich auch die von euch die, die, die mathematischen, die physischen äh, Grundlagen fehlen, methodisch schon einfach mal. Aber Brauchst du nicht. Bitte? Brauchst du auch nicht. Also die, das, was Dell sagt, ist, ist genug. Also weil jeder kann das selber ähm, wahrnehmen. Ne? Also du brauchst die Mathematik nicht, um die ähm, Widersprüche zu erkennen, will ich damit sagen. Aber ich habe dich unterbrochen, sorry. Ja, nee, das war's dann auch. <lacht> das war's dann auch. Yeah, not too much, guys. I've got to be writing a lot of subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can be, say it in English, probably better, but I just yeah. thought it'd be nice if people yeah. see yeah. it. Yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be typing quite a lot. What okay. do you think? Have you uh, made think... question things? Has it made you think a little bit? It does, it does give you some... Well, it doesn't make you think, definitely, yeah. But um, that's what we want. It's it's really hard to believe as well. It, it's it's not hard to believe that there is some stuff like I don't know some weird things we can't explain. But then on the other hand, it is at the moment the explanation like most of the people think at least, um, and there is no proper other explanation. If there was another theory which could be tested by, it's, it's you could maybe compare it to I don't know the health system in the US, whatever they do, ever, someone says, yeah, that's wrong, but no one says how to do it. If there was like a contradictory theory, maybe that would make it easier to believe or at least to test it. And if there was some material at least, or again, material can be man manipulated and everything, but it's it definitely Give some room to think about it and think about how the world works. But you'd like another model to help I'd you. Love, I'd, lo I'd love to have some something. Not only some people saying me, um, yeah, this doesn't make sense. Give me something. Give me something that, that could even, maybe make sense. I think what you said. You? I think what you said. Uh, you find that hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, as an adult, if you were told for the very first time that you actually live with a spinning ball with water on it. And it's shooting around, around the sun. It's just that'd be, miles that'd be weird. It's true. Sorry. <laughs> to to you know, if you if you if you thought about living on a plane and then someone tells you it's, it's around, that'd be weird as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. as I say, in the end, it would be really, especially at the moment, it would be really hard to fake everything, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, maybe there is some instance doing it, but then there would be like a big bang, literally a big bang in the in the future. But, is it, is it really so hard to fake when, when theory has never actually been, sorry, when gravity has never really been proven? And, and, and as my friend said, water existing on the exterior of a su subject, on the exterior of a but shape. If we, if we have, uh, I don't know, if there's solid material around the earth, there should be a way to test it. Yeah, but like by, I don't know, by shooting something up, obviously it's not that easy, but especially with the, with the like, new technology, like, as you said, high altitude balloons or whatever. Um, it should be easier than like 50 years ago. Yeah. Especially because if you do some stuff, like if you use Facebook, YouTube, whatever, your own website to live stream stuff like that, um, uh, which is not really easy to manipulate in the first place, then it could be easier at least, not, not to prove anything else, but to prove that it's not wrong. Well, or to prove that it's not, that it's not a globe. That's been for, done, for, though. For, for me, again, you know, science, you know, if science can falsify something, 
because it can falsify something, it doesn't have to have something to replace it's true, it. It's true. Yeah. So it can, it can be an ongoing investigation. So right. if, if I say to you, you know, the agreed curvature calculator for the globe was eight inches per mile squared. So over a mile, you would have eight inches of curvature, and then it would square for every mile after that. So it's an exponential curve. Now we can look at that. And we can see a distance, say, of 60 miles, say, from Blackpool to the Isle of Man. And we can look at the curvature calculator to see how much you know would be hidden. And the fact is that we can stand on the beach at Blackpool and we can see the Isle of Man. Now, according to, to mathematics, the Earth curvature calculator, we shouldn't be able to see that. Well, that way to know if that is, it, maybe it's high ground due to some geographical stuff, due to earthquakes hundreds of thousands of years ago. No one really knows. No one is, look at the highlands, for example. The islands are obviously higher yeah. in altitude than, I don't know, Lower England. And then maybe it's the same for that one. It's, it's not really proof, is it? So, so, so if, uh, just to show you a point, when we talk about land masses and the height of them, mm. where do we judge that from? Sea level in the end. <laughs> <laughs> the sea's what? <laughs> level of it. Most of it's water, though. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I see a point. I definitely see a point. Yeah. And uh, it gives you some room for some fantasies at least, fantasies in, well, your, in your own head. Even, the, even mind body philosophy and other philosophies, it opens up new avenues of contemplation and thought. Um, but again, when you were saying about you know having another theory to, to maybe show people, my theory is that exactly. You know, why don't we all agree that there's anomalies and that the scientific community should be you know looking at this, and then we can have an ongoing investigation to establish exactly where we are. That for me is you know the model that we can work on and that we can look at. But if I if you bring me any model in science and I find one fact that contradicts your model and you can't account for the model or you know, work it into your model, your whole model has to be scrapped and you start again. That is one of the core tenets of, of natural science. science you, know, you, can, you can argue against the hypothesis based on facts, like water is level, so the hypothesis is wrong. But what you can't do is bring a hypothesis that argues against the facts, right? You can't go the other way around. You can take facts and argue against somebody telling yeah. you nonsense, Absolutely. but you know, so, the other way around is, is yeah. just not science. So huh? we know water is level. Now, if somebody brings me an image that contradicts natural observation, I know their image is false because the natural fact tells me how it behaves, but when they bring an image that's wrong. And that's what I mean about not necessarily needing another model to explain it, you know? You have to be able to say, well, wait a minute, that's contradicting natural facts, so it can't possibly be right. Yes? The scenario I always say to people is if, if I took you prisoner and uh, you know, from a baby, and I kept you on a group of deserted islands your whole life and I told you the earth was round, see? And as you started to experience and you went, you know, this earth is not round, then I came along to you and says, well, if it's not round, tell me where it is then. You know, you have never left that area. Mm. So it's a logical fallacy for me to then demand that you have tell me what the full dimensions are when you have never explored them. So that's the position that we are in. We have never explored the full dimensions of the earth. So it's impossible for us to bring a model forward. Yeah. So for example, there's never been circumnavigation from north to south, you know, they always go east to west when they say they're going round, which is easily done on a plane, you just go round in a circle, right? On a flat plane, but going over the top of the ball and round has never been done, never been documented, no footage, huh? Should be easy in a day like this, right? And I'm not talking about the, the space pictures, right? I mean, let's get in an aeroplane and fly once round and film it all day. Never happened. Why not? Because I want to see that aeroplane upside down, you know, when it's... So if you're on the space station, zoom in on Australia and shows a helicopter taking off upside down? Nonsense. Total nonsense. Here's a thought experiment for you. Imagine you were at the top of the sphere in the North Pole and you jumped in head first and you managed to go right through at the bottom of the Earth. Would you come out standing on your feet or would you be upside down or where would you be? Would the rain be falling into your nose? <laughs> but we were expected to believe that though, weren't we? Yeah, that's what we're, that's the claim they made to us all. Huh? That's what we're, trying, we're all we're born trying, into. We're trying to rationalise and we try and look because these images are so embedded in our conscious, you know? It's difficult, man. But then we're, we're not conditioned to actually look at that critically. I think for ourselves, are we? But we totally accept it as we were done 
uh, school at five years old, and since then we've not really questioned it. I have an enemy, so. Well, uh, you there's three, three generations nearly, eh, John? <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding, Matt. Uh, three generations of people from all walks Chief of life yeah. that, you know, have the same problem with what is being claimed, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're not alone, huh? and mm -hmm. we'd like everybody, especially maybe people studying, to think more critically, and that's, that's why we're engaging I'm, with you. It wouldn't, like, it wouldn't work without people being, having critical thoughts. Yeah. Otherwise, what, we, what people in here are experiencing is um, this active um, attention to us trying to suppress it, you know, um, and that for me tells me everything because... Like what? What have you experienced? Well, you know, online, um, we have trolls and, you know, I'll call them agents who are constantly attacking, just logical fallacies, they're trying every manipulative tactic under the book. Well, that, that's everywhere though. Look at Justin Bieber. Yeah, well, He's yeah, got those agents course. all over him. Of course, course. taking over your channel. Well, you mean the yeah. ghetto? You mean? <laughs> that well, bird. You know, when I go live, a few incidents I've had when I've been on live doing my hangouts, and some of the agents get access to come into the hangout, and they kick us all out and shut it down. So they're overtaking, you know, my public hangout and stuff like that. And why would you do that if, if it was nonsensical and a stupid idea? Anyway? And if it is a like globe. You know, what's the, what's the issue with is why such ridicule? You know, if it is and it's self-evident and it's provable, what's the problem? Well, why are, how, why are people, why are so many people from different walks of life have so many questions open, you know? If, if the questions hadn't been answered, the questions wouldn't be there anymore, you know? I was saying before about the site observations, there's people all over the world who can see, you know, hundred odd miles and they can see things in the distance that should be gone. You know, you should never be able to see them. So, there's people waking up all over the world who are starting to document and observe these things, and for me, it's coming. It's you know, it's going to come out eventually. But the worry is, is that they offer us some other falsity, you know, some other story. Um, that's just my personal worry. But that's mine too, which is why people need to be critical thinkers and not just believers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, guys, just been absolutely Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for thanks. Well, what's your name? Dale, I'm Dale. Dale. Oh, I've not got my cards. Yeah, You've been Jonas. Gavin. Been Morning. Gavin. Jonas, hi. Hi. Dominic. Uh, Dominic. I'm John. Jonas. Uh, what's, what's your name? Donny. What's the channel's name? Donny and Jonas. Jonas. The channel was called Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Mm -hmm. What's the channel? Yeah. Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Okay, how many viewers do you have? I have 65,000. Are you guys okay with us uploading it to YouTube? We'll come to you Yeah, I'm I'm not a 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 I'm not a